Greetings folks, this is Woody from Obadiahs and we're looking at the nitty gritty of this HM hybrid furnace. So of course the technical aspect is always what I'm most you know, interested in. I figured I'd open this puppy up for you, give you a little peek inside so you can see what makes this dude tick. So as you can see you have a firebox, this is it down here, heavy plate steel. These up here are the chambers that Sarah were talking about, your secondary combustion chamber. So what's happening is you can see is the smoke is literally coming up and the top passes through actually the 5 inch and going out the 6. You have hot air coming up from the bottom as it blows up through the jacket that's insulated that cuts down the noise and helps hold the heat in. So this literally becomes pressurized and it forces it up the plenum. And then what you have in the top is a fan limit switch. The fan limit switch controls a three or four speed fan. And what it's doing is a temperature sensing inside the top of the plenum. So you have a fire in the firebox, the unit's heating up, the plenum gets to a certain temperature, turns on the fan. The fire dies down, fan's running, turns the fan off. You have a big fire and it's really running, kicks the fan up another speed. Still getting bigger, still getting hotter, kicks it up another speed. That's how that works. Fan limit switch. Open it up, there's a dial inside. You can control the temperatures of what speed um, it's going to kick on at what temperature. So. Sometimes these can go bad if your fan doesn't kick on, that's where you start. So anyhow, there you have it. I just kind of wanted to give you the nitty gritty. I'm going to give you a couple shots down below so you can literally see um, what it looks like for the electric heat exchanger. If you peek down here and get you some light so you can see, you can actually look around inside. And I'll take you down below. And you can see that coil, that's the electric coil, and behind that is a blower that Sarah was talking about. So essentially what it's going to do is if you're using wood, all the steel gets hot and the air coming in from down below gets heated up and goes rises naturally into the plenum. There's that rod you can see sticking out up there. That's your fan limit switch up in the plenum. You can see the top of the firebox or the top of the furnace is open. It's all sheet metal up there. So very simple. Warm air rises, goes out the top of your furnace. So if the um, power is out, you have those bypass tubes. You're still going to make good heat. There's nothing to inhibit it. It's going to rise up into the ductwork and then go into the house. Um, of course, you don't want to have your um, air system open. You wouldn't want to open your door. You wouldn't want to open your ash door and get a rip roar and fire going because you could literally overheat the unit. It is designed to be running with a blower. But the way it has a bypass system, it restricts the airflow for the draft control allowing the combustion air into the firebox and by hitting that bypass if the power is out there would just be enough oxygen going into the firebox to keep the unit from over firing. If you have the oil that unit mounts down below and it's very similar to these tubes up here. Same kind of system. So it's like a double bypass. You can see there's a knockout down below. That's where the oil exhausts from. If you have your burning wood, you can use the same chimney for your oil. They can share. For gas, you will have to use a different chimney. Napoleon uses a high efficiency system so they're generally going to be PVC anyhow. Here's a biometric damper. This has got a calibration right there. You can see it's a counterweight. And what happens as the draft goes up the chimney 
it creates vacuum. And as it creates vacuum, it opens this. And that cuts the draft down on your chimney. If you have too much draft, you won't get a very long burn time out of this furnace. Because it's a high efficiency furnace, that's why they want the draft control. Especially if you're burning oil. Anytime you put any oil appliance in, most places it's code, you have to put a biometric damper in. Your, your system can be actually installed for your cold air intake, however you would want to do that. Um, it comes with a blower. If you don't have the electric module, which is this, this blower mounts right to the side. If you order the electric module, it just increases that span. And then there's a control panel on the back that you can access. Here is the electrical system for the furnace. And it comes in various sizes. 20kW is what we're looking at. So all of the controls are built in. And you just run your wiring over to it. And uh, like she said, if you were gone on vacation, that would just kick on. A lot of people have that system. So there's your blower school cage down below. It's rubber mounted. It's a good size blower. Pretty high volume. The blower is optional for it. And it's sold separately. If you do go to the gas unit, um, I would recommend to bypass this blower, go with the ECM blower that's going to go with the gas furnace instead of the three or four speed blower. The ECM is a continuous variable, infinitely variable speed blower. Um, all high efficiency furnaces use them these days. They use a lot less power and they are based on CFM and they're computerized. So they're going to move the exact amount of air according to what the computer tells it it needs to do. So they're way more efficient. So there you go, up close and personal. This refractory board is to help keep the combustion temperatures high. And uh, you can see inside the firebox, the steel tubes. It actually has refractory brick in the top instead of just panels. And then the stainless steel tubes, it's all real fire brick with the stainless steel retainers. There is an ash dump as well. And then for those who are wondering, there's your air wash. You have two different type doors. You can get a solid insulated door, which will increase the combustion temperatures of your firebox. Um, you literally get more BTUs from your wood with the insulated door. Um, you don't get as much heat down in the basement. However, the glass door, if you wanted the glass door, make sure you don't put anything in front of it. Um, the heat coming from here, if you put a box right here, it will catch on fire. So I, I want to mention the safety issues about having the glass door in a basement. It's just like a wood stove anywhere. You wouldn't put a, a box in front of a... But because it's in a basement, people store stuff and they don't think about it. So... And 48 inch fence. Yeah, it's a 48 inch clearance in front of this glass door. So if you're putting it in a basement, you would want to probably consider going with the insulated door just for safety reasons. However, you know, if you can see it, it's a beautiful unit. It's very well designed, it's very attractive, very well painted. I think it's very, you know, just high quality. So in a shop setting like I have here, being able to view the fire, the ambiance and everything of it is very nice. So, and then it throws a lot of heat through the glass into the shop. So that part is really cool. These are the vents that she was talking about. And what that does is that helps keep this front from getting too hot. 
So if you accidentally touched it, it wouldn't burn you. It's got that insulating panel. Same thing with the airflow here. If you bumped into this, it isn't going to burn you. There you have it. This is Woody. And this is the Napoleon HMF 150. Thank you.